As a retired comp player, what I, I'm trained to hear things, and what I hear is I hear a polished salesperson and I hear a farmer. I'm going with the farmer. <laughs> I'm tired of the salesman. Uh, I would like to know from Clint when we're going to stop this nation building and bring our troops home. Good Very good question. You know the last time we declared war? World War II. The last time we followed the game plan. Congress declares war, and we give it an all-out effort, but when we win, we come home. And we have, you know, our founding fathers warned us of this a long time ago. George Washington, no, no foreign entanglements. Thomas Jefferson, friends of freedom everywhere, guardians of ours alone. They warned us of this a long time ago. We got brave men and women. We have just suffered the, the most deadliest month over there in Afghanistan. Why? What have we accomplished? Nothing. We aren't accomplishing anything over there. All we're doing is we're just going through the hills and we're trying to find Osama bin Laden. Come on. Let's bring our people home. Let's put them on the border. Let's secure our nation. Let's stop this nation building that they're talking about. No, we don't want to be isolationists. No, we still want to be able to trade. But let's get rid of GAF and NAFTA because this, this field is not a fair field right now. It's a very low field. We got to get back to it. I'm not going to play with you. We're going to compete with the, for, with, the, with the world today. So, yes, bring our troops home now. Thank you. But before he does that, uh, get hold of a second. Uh, Leon, there's a gentleman there in the door who's going to be next. Uh, Claude Oliver has asked me to make an announcement. And I want to do it quick before I forget. The Tri-City Tea Party is uh, both having a booth at the Benton Franklin Fair and Rodeo, August 24 and 28, and uh, we're going to we're going to staff that booth throughout the fair, and we need some help. If you folks want to help the Tri-City Tea Party, we need you to volunteer to help us staff that booth, uh, attend the fair, and uh, you'll have a chance to meet a lot of people and uh, help carry the, the message. So please sign up to uh, help us with the fair. Okay, Wayne, right here in the center, Norm. Uh, we've got a couple of time bombs going. Well, we've got quite a few time bombs going up in Washington. One goes by the label of Social Security, the other by Medicare. They're just going to be hard, hard decisions that are going to be made. How are we going to get there? Well, let's face facts, first of all. Social Security was robbed by the politicians. We've got, a, we've got a time bomb. It's not going to be there for me, and I know that. But at, eight, at 51 years old, I'm willing to keep paying in for another 30 years for the people that are dependent on that. Now, the Times article that was written doesn't portray me that way, but believe me, they mixed my words and they made me sound like an evil person. I want to make sure everybody that's depending on Social Security today is taken care of. But in the same breath, I want to be able to pay into my own retirement plan, okay, tax-free. And the money I bring out of it, tax-free. We get it back to in our hands. The same thing is true with Medicare and Medicaid. We pay into our own medical accounts, tax-free. And we bring the money out tax-free as we need it. Why does the government need to play a role in this at all? Why does the government feel feels like it needs to be in between you and your doctor? Because they want control. Because they want to determine how long you're going to live. And you know what? Life liberty and the pursuit of happiness are unable rights the government needs to get out of the way and let us take care of ourselves so the only way to solve the social security problem is to get our fiscal house in order and the only way we're going to get our fiscal house in order is to stop spending money through the 10 3 lean program that's basic for instance under Newt Gingrich and Bill Clinton, they cut taxes and they took a $200 billion deficit and turned it into a $200 billion surplus. That's the power of cutting taxes and controlling spending. This is what I propose and this is the way we can get our social security system back on track. The second step though, in my mind, is individual retirement accounts. It's the only way because it puts all the power back in your hands and takes it out of the politicians' hands. They can no longer touch that money. So that's my solution 
It's pragmatic, it's simple. Two plus two equals four, does not equal 97, doesn't matter what you do. And to the gentleman in the back who suggested that I was a Paulist salesman, <laughs> I have a question for you. The idea behind that insinuation is that I'm suggesting that I'm going to offer you something, but I'm not going to deliver. Is that correct? Manufacturing company that continues to thrive, and I've laid no one out. Why is it that I spend over two thousand dollars a day educating my people? Why is it that I've traveled all over the world and become an expert at lean manufacturing, and people then come all over the world to my plant to see what I'm doing? Might there be some substance to what I'm saying, sir? That's my question to you. I have a question about the, the problems in the state of Washington. How do we offset the liberal west side of the state so that we can get rid of some of these liberals that come from the state of Washington? Uh, you know, we get outvoted, uh, and, and you can see how interested they are in showing up here on this side of the state. Well, first of all, let me just say this. They're disenfranchised with their party, too. There was a Washington State poll that was just done here in the state of Washington. It was a Republican and a Democrat. They pulled 110 people from every district. In that poll, Patty Murray got 33% of the vote. I got 16.9, Dino Rossi got 15.9. The telltale is, I had 141 Democrats vote for me. I had 127 independents. Dino Rossi had zero. So believe me, as bold as I'm being with this message of mine, I'm resonating and pulling the Democrat people and the independent people to this campaign. Believe me, if we stay solidly planted on a platform, and we're true leadership and quit putting our fingers in the air and looking for votes and waffling on issues and be firm whether they agree with you or not, it'll bring people to you. Now listen, this, this other side's in dire straits. I was just over there for six days traveling. Buildings are empty everywhere. People are unemployed. They see the light. They will resonate to this, believe me. We can't cast them off to the side. I've had two unions come to me and ask me to speak to their unions. And I said, wait a minute, I'm a Republican. <laughs> and they said, yeah, we know. And I said, then why do I owe this honor? And they said, well, we got a lot of time on our hands. We're unemployed. <laughs> and believe me, I said, I almost said, well, how are you liking that hope and change now? But I bit myself right there. I said, don't do it. Because that's not how you're going to unite the country. You're going to unite this state and this country by saying, sir, I'd love to come talk to you. But you've got to be willing to listen. You gotta know that your your top end people, your leadership, is jeopardizing your job by demanding too much from their employer. Your employer has to make money or it can't stay in business. They've got to be able to sit down and negotiate like Ford and continue on to make money and prosper. And then everybody's happy. All right, Paul is from the West Side. Let me just tell you, it's easy to be a conservative over here. Try going over to my side and be a conservative. Now that is difficult, and that's what I live with every day. So here's what I'm going to tell you. There are two reasons why we lose. I've thought a lot about this. Number one, we cannot articulate our ideas effectively. People aren't compelled by our message. Number two, we're always on the defense. Clint knows that, you can play football. You can't gain yardage being on the defense, you gotta be on the offense. Why aren't we on the offense? 
because the quality of our ideas are not compelling. When you have someone like me that says, hey, I'm not a typical Republican, I want to lean out the federal government, that's innovative, that's different, that's new. That's a compelling argument for people to listen to. That's why I have tons of liberals and independents that are voting for me. Because they see me as not an ideologue, but as a rational, thoughtful man that leads with intelligence and that has powerful ideas that attracts people from all over the world to figure out how we're doing it. That's how we're going to win. I'll give you a great example. This is called a cell phone. Do you have a question? See this right here? This is my new iPhone, about four or five hundred dollars. This, I'm going to show you how to articulate an idea that's compelling. This phone costs four hundred bucks. Twenty-five years ago, a computer to do this work was fifty million dollars and would fill this room. The free market did this. The government didn't do this. The free market did this. So the next time a liberal says that the free market is going to run roughshod over people, you pull out your cell phone and you say, see that bad boy right there? <laughs> that thing was created by innovation, by the free market. Could you imagine what the gun phone would look like? It'd be a suitcase you pull behind you. When you want to make a phone call, you pull the handle out. And then you file four pieces of paperwork to make a call. Hi. Um, I um, I wonder about uh, the illegal votes um, uh, with driver's license. Now, do uh, illegals get to get driver's license in the state, and, does, and do they automatically get to vote? Now. Well, there was just an instance over there, I don't know if you read about it or not, but over there in Bellingham, a lady was arrested with the Department of Motor Ve Vehicles, and she was giving licenses to illegals in a motel room. And yes, they get to vote. Hmm. Folks, this is, this is a state issue, but I'm telling you right now, what we gotta do in the state is we gotta make that tough decision. We gotta get back to the polls. We gotta yes. get rid of these absentee ballots. Yes. Yes. There's too much fraud. There's too much fraud, there's too much opportunity for fraud. We gotta get back to the polls where we gotta go show our ID and we vote. Yes. Yeah, it's an inconvenience, but it's a way of being accountable for each and every vote. It's gonna be a hardship, but we gotta be willing to go through the hardships to make sure we get this country back on track. I am on this, I am absolutely against the mail-in ballots. It is a disaster, and I'll tell you why. Because when you have to go into someone's garage, as I did growing up in voting, it, it, it creates accountability. It creates a community. It says to your neighbor, hey, I'm a responsible citizen. And the ones that don't vote, it conveys you really don't care. And there is some natural peer pressure there that is excellent. I am 100% against the mail-in ballots and hardships, things like that. That's the way it used to be. But now it removes all accountability. And people have said to me, man, I mailed that ballot and I'm even wondering whether or not it's getting counted. But when you go to the ballot, you do that thing and you drop it in that box. That's the way it should be. Yeah.